Welcome to Lift Your Story Podcast with guest Dr. Pujan Zane, psychotherapist, radio podcast host, international speaker, and author. Hi, everyone. I am Laurieann. I am that gal from Toronto, Canada, and I am with. I am that guy. I am Roy Miller from Dallas, Texas. Welcome to our Lift Your Story Podcast. In this episode, we are so pleased to have to have Dr. Pujan Zane, and she is a psychologist therapist, radio podcast host, international speaker and author. And she is also the host of a heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujan. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's a a joy to be with the two of you and anybody else who's listening. (laughs) (laughs) So you're the originator of awareness integration. So tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. You know, um, when I, I came um, to the United States, uh, I was born in Iran and I came to the U.S. when I was 12. So uh, I kind of raised myself. And then obviously when you raise yourself, you probably do need a therapist. So I started with therapy side by side when I started with all of these uh, self-improvement seminars, you know. So um I was 18 and I said, I want everything. I want my house to be married, um, you know, have my business and by 30 and by 28, I did. I had my flower business all over Los Angeles, very successful, had my house, had my marriage. I wasn't happy. So this was like a big question. How come I got everything I said I wanted and I'm not happy. So I looked, I went to therapy and I looked at a lot of the traumas that I had as a child, as I grew grew up, you know, abuses that I had, neglect, and then, you know, immigration alone had put up a lot of stuff, which I I was living in a survival mode. So that's how the journey started with self-improvement seminars and all of that with uh, psychotherapy. Well, 30 years later of doing the psychotherapy and being, uh, you know, being licensed, then um, I studied a lot of different types of um, theories and interventions, and I worked them all on my myself. I would go to those therapists and say, do it on me. I, if it works on me, then maybe it'll work on other people too, because I'm one of those rebellious people that is like, no, 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 I got to do it my way. So any of these, I... It, it worked on me and I, it took away the traumas and it healed me. And I was like, yes, that's what it is. But, you know, every theory has a, has a best uh, part and some parts that are, might not work for everyone. So some theories come in from the cognitive place. If you change your thoughts, all will be well. Other ones will say, if you change your feelings, all will be well. If you only change your behavior, all will be well. If you only handle your body, all will be well. And I said, great, let's bring all of them, four of them together, since they're all going to work well together, right? So created this model that it does bring all of the best of what uh, my uh, predators and, uh, you know, uh, masters of psychotherapy and theories and interventions brought and kind of brought them into a system that we become aware first, because obviously if I want to change anything, I have to first have an awareness. Um, So becoming aware of your thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and the impact that you put in in the world, in a sense, and be responsible and accountable for it. And and then looking at what parts of it I still have uh, wounding from the past so that every time I want to do something, it comes in and sabotages me. So kind of like check those out and bring him home, you know? So we don't have all these inner trials we're hanging around here for, you know, I'm 60 and I might have another six inner children still hanging out. (laughs) It's okay, you know, you can be a part of me. You don't need to stay a child. We can all be 60. You don't need to remain a five-year-old. Like, you know, we can all be 60 together. Um, And then from there, I think that when we clean up, then it's the concept of neutrality and positivity where I can learn the skills to, get the goals that I want because most of us obviously we could set goals but we don't have skills to get the goals always so but what I notice is sometimes when we haven't cleaned up we get the goals we get the skills but then again we keep sabotaging ourselves so um, that was the key component for me another part was that I realized we are always in relatedness together we're either relating to others or we're assuming how our others are relating to us you know, we're walking around constantly with perceptions of others. Um, and then we also take ourselves everywhere. So regardless of 
uh, it's, it's like, okay, I will think of Roy and feel about Roy a particular way and I behave a particular way. And then I will assume Roy thinks of me or feels a particular way toward me. But still, even if I'm sitting beside Roy, I have an opinion of myself beside Roy. You know, like mm -hmm. Roy could be generous and say all these wonderful things. If I have a low self esteem and see, thinking I'm not good enough, no matter what Roy says, I will think he's just saying this just because his show you know it's not about me i wouldn't take it in i wouldn't take in the compliments of the world so so that's why how we are with ourselves no matter where we go is also important so the model uh, takes care of relatedness to yourself uh, and relatedness to the world uh, awareness about the few about the present moment completing the past envisioning the future and coming back in the present moment and taking the actions um, to create that. We've done a lot of research um, in uh, different aspects, whether it was through therapy or whether we've done the research in um, like a workshop style. And we did the, also a research in Cal State and Long Beach with students um, without any coaches or therapists. And we found astonishing results that it minimized depression um, between 67% to 75%, depending if it was done as a self-help or therapy, and anxiety between 43% and 64%, again, depending on whether it was done as a self-help or therapy. And it raised uh, self-esteem and self-confidence and self-agency. Um, so we are still doing a lot of research. There are different universities that are doing right now. Actually, university... I have a teacher in uh, Texas, in Houston, that uh, she is doing her dissertation um, in this model. So we'll have another research coming out uh, early. Then one of my friends who is in love with children and she had opened up her daycare, she and I started doing this as, a, uh, as an educational model. Like, why do you have to become 30 and look back and say, I made a mess, now let me go to therapy and handle it. Why don't we also bring it into education of children, even from early teaching them how to be aware of themselves, how to become accountable, how to see that if I intend something, what actions I need to do to get it, um, or the result I create, you know, I hit the other child and is crying, how else can I go back and shift that relationship versus now, which is always somebody else's fault. And, um, you know, until we, we kind of grow up and take some responsibility. And we're intending to take it also into school systems, you know, and all the way uh, to uh, from zero to 12 K. Um, also in the process of bringing a course into college students, uh, because we did one of the studies in Cal State Long Beach. We're trying to also do that. So we set up, uh, we proposed a course because, uh, you know, college students also have the highest level of depression and anxiety, highest level of suicide of those years. And it's the most important years of going from childhood to adulthood and, you know, creating their confidence is important as they go. So it's probably one of the best places for it. So... Fingers crossed, we're going across the world and we're looking at um, setting up an app that people can do it because this book, The Life Reset, um, is the one uh, that it brings all the exercises. So it's been used as a, um, as a self-help model so people could use it anywhere in the world. How much pushback are you getting from the schools about implementing these programs? Roy, it's interesting because they all, when they hear it, they're like, absolutely wonderful. We want it. We need it. And they're, so, they're busy. They're busy. Like the amount of work that these people have to do. We had worked with a, um, with a charter school. At, she was just like amazing. They brought 30 of our, their teachers. We started doing training for the teachers to, to be able to pull this through. And... Uh, the teachers kept saying, we want it, we want it. And um, the structure just didn't, didn't allow it. It was almost like they were so busy. Everybody was overwhelmed and just about, you know, overwhelmed about what to do on a basic level of what they had to do. Even when it was, and, and even at COVID, it got worse. So we said, okay, you know, if the cool schools are closed, but they weren't. And it put so much pressure on the teachers and the parents at that point. That's what we're facing, actually. Like the pushback, I don't get a verbal pushback, 
but it's a it's a behavioral kind of mm -hmm. like Ugh, there's nothing happens mm -hmm. yeah. a delay yeah Delays. yeah push it over there's another pile of paper we're going to just put yeah. over here and yet i love what you're saying though is uh you know we've spoken to that roy and i uh with other guests is that there's so many things that we uh that really we haven't been paying attention to with our children to so we get to adulthood and there's so many people saying i'm not good enough i don't have this but they're adults by that time because it was never taught my daughter was really badly bullied i was but she was worse bullied and there's nothing in the schools to a teach and i told her i said those people who are bullying you were not happy with themselves but you never spoke to me about it you need to speak out but that we're all taught to say hold everything in be strong boo boo uh as children we do and i love what you're doing because they need to deal with that uh and even if it's not going to a teacher go to a parent to say hey you know i'm being bullied and then the parent can explain a little bit better as to why that could happen or go for help because that is something if you listen to people how many how many young people have been bullied in their lives? It, it's scary. Whether it be parental bullying, whether it be you know schooling bullying, and it's only now coming out, but it's still not strong enough. So, like I said, I'm glad you're doing this because that's so important, and I hope the schools listen to you. I certainly hope so because I do think that uh, depression, as you know, and anxiety keeps going higher and higher. It got worse with COVID. And um, I think there's an aspect to it, which is situational, you know, stuff happens and we have to deal with it. And obviously we'll get, you know, upset, sad, anxious. And so that to me is a normal response that we have to any situation. But then there's another part which goes beyond the normalcy, which it gets stuck, like we're constantly now experiencing it. So some of it is a psychological aspect of how do we interpret, how do we perceive, how do we handle, what are the, all the stories we tell ourselves and kind of like run by that. And those are the things that we could definitely, the more that we are aware of ourselves and we see these dualities and the way, you know, learning how to reality check and how to accept reality, how to manage our emotions, handle our emotions and, you know, uh, see them as signals, love them, but question the logic behind them that we are having some of those. Uh, and then also learning how I'm not going to know everything. I don't have all the skills. Um, so it's like open my eyes to learning constantly from the outside world and implementing I think those help us move forward and create more fulfilling um, states of being versus consistently, you know, finding ourselves into battling not only with our own emotions, but with the reality of the world as if it shouldn't be that way. You know, somebody should change it. And we get keep finding ourselves in, in that space. And it's like, okay, I there, there are things I can do and there are things I can't do. And um you know what is it that i have the agency and the ability to do and if i don't can i talk to um lori and then have her with her expertise tell me uh and then we can become you know close together as a team moving forward roy might have something else the same way you guys became partner in this you know so this kind of uh each person having the ability to be responsible and accountable but with that also comes the, the awareness that i don't have it all but you do some and you do some and can we collectively create something together so we can all be fulfilled in a sense you know we we interviewed someone and, and they were saying you know that that parents nowadays you know they got their kids in a bubble they want to protect them and you know save them from everything don't let them you know get hurt whatever but and she was saying that you know we need as parents need to be having our kids learn responsibility and consequences you know to, and they've got to realize growing up you know that you make decisions and there, there's consequences for those decisions you know and they're being held accountable not oh it's okay it's okay you know and i think that probably the generation nowadays is, is is more like that from what my perception is. I may be wrong, but from what I see, it's they're really, parents are overprotective. 
you know, they want to, they're a kid in a bubble, not to see the old cruel world, but they've got to get out in that cruel world. They've got to learn how to, to cope with it. I totally agree. I think that we, as parents, um, raise our children for the world that we are. We don't raise our children for another world. The world as is and within how they're getting raised in and they have to, you know, they have to deal with the human beings out there. They have to deal with the economy that's out there. They have to deal with the governments that are out there. That's what they're going to get ready for. So um, essence of responsibility and accountability is important since childhood. I believe that if a human being their body and their system says they are capable of something, then we should allow them to learn the skills and do it independently from there. Like if a child at one point can have the ability to walk, we need to let them walk. We watch them, but we need to let them walk. If they know how to, if, if their motor skills are about the time that they can you know, tie their shoe, they need to be able to do that. And so this can go above. Now they know how to take a plate and put it in the dishwasher, they should. They, if they know how to create a sandwich, they do. If they know how to fix their bed, they do. If they know how to handle money from you, which is give me money and I want to spend it, then they need to learn financial management as soon as possible by their allowances. So if you can teach your children skills that they have to do actually in the world, right when they can and their system says it can they can uh their brain says okay they can this is a time this is the developmental stage that they can we, if the sooner we teach them the sooner they learn all the struggles and obstacles like you were talking about bullying there are a lot of bullies in the world so i can't just protect my child from bully i have to teach him or her how to handle bullies not just go hide and I'm going to come in front of you and bully the others. I can role model. I like stand here and allow me to show you how to do it and, you know, have the child then next do it themselves and how, because that's how they're going to get um, strength and, and confidence because they're practicing something that it becomes theirs. So I totally agree with you that overprotection of children doesn't work. I'm all about accepting vulnerabilities and uh, cherishing vulnerabilities. But I also think being authentic with your vulnerabilities has a lot of strength. So you can bring strength and vulnerability together versus vulnerability here and strength here. Uh, it's like acknowledging what I'm vulnerable about and then acknowledging also what strengths I have and bring it in. And if I don't have the strengths, acknowledge I don't and go get help and then role model what it is that I can and I can bring it here. And, you know, finding resources is a strength. Utilizing resources from other people is a strength. So, um, yes, I, I, I do agree. My issue is not even children. My issue is even the adults are still not taking responsibility and accountability. That's true. But, you know, it's funny because last night I was talking to my son and, and we were talking about my grandkids, you know, and, kind of what they're growing up the world is now. And, and and my son said something really, really to me was profound. He goes, Dad, you've got to realize you're looking at things from your perspective of when you were a kid. He said, you know, like me, I look at how I grew up, which was different than how you grew up a little. He says, but Matthew and Nicholas, it's a totally different world, even from when I grew up. And he said, so, you know, I understand your your view because you're viewing it what you did when you were young, but it's change. Everything changes, you know. But you want it to be like it was when you grew up, where you went out and played, didn't have to worry about anything. It's not that way anymore, you know. I said, well, I guess you got a point there. I didn't think of it that way. True. Yeah. I don't remember. Like I grew up in. Uh, I went to a boarding school in um, Scottsdale, Arizona, and I remember. Uh, even though the the boarding school had a lot of uh, people who were there who were using drugs and everything, but still, when I work with children right now, the pressure that these children have, we didn't have. Like they go to school and they have to watch whether there's going to be guns. Somebody's going to bring a gun in their mm -hmm. backpack or not. Uh, you know, drugs, all sorts, 
coming in schools and they have to be able to say yes or no to it and what's going to happen. Um, before, I think that in, in our age, I'm 60, it was like, okay, you take this route and if you're good at this route, then you're going to have a good income and then you'll have a good life. There was a path. And the kids right now have no path. I mean, in 15 minutes, they could have their fame and you know they could be an influencer or anything that they wanted to be. So it, it's there is no path. And half of the path that we knew we had to go no longer works. So it's a lot of, let me just figure it out. And I don't think we've ever had this much um, information. You know, a 10 year old did not have access to all information, political, sexual, porn, <laughs> everything you can imagine. Uh, you know, is that a, I mean, that's, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Now we had to go to the library to find things. And if you wanted porn, that was like next to no, <laughs> like you couldn't as well, a kid. Yeah. But I, well, I mean, the, the now it's all accessible stuff we didn't learn till we were teenagers. No. Um, Fifth, you know, starting to date 15, 16, 17. These kids are now seven or eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people had to really deal with their children's uh, intimate relationship around 20 years of age. And now I see parents um, have to deal with the stuff around age 12. Mm -hmm. Well, the mind is very different at age 12, the needs and desires, you know, how much do you see and you don't and what you put yourself and then these kids put themselves on internet, which parents completely lose the concept of safety. Um, and it's out there. So there's you know, the, the fear that is there consistently. We've opened ourselves to the world, but the way, the same way you open yourself to the world and you get access of information, you're also getting access to a lot of uh, misinformation and also, um, you know, threats, let's say, or danger. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was a teenager, I thought I knew everything, only to find out I didn't know nothing. <laughs> I, I think one of the big things, though, and, and my daughter even said this, like I taught her, I said, if there's a white van or any kind of van and it's following you and it's behind you, just be careful. What I'm saying is education is really important. But I do remember when she was on Facebook and she posted something and I saw it and I was quite disturbed by it. And I told her, I said, that is not something you want to post on it. I mean, it wasn't anything sexual, but it was just something that disturbed me as a parent. And uh, she blocked me. Like, that's what they do. They just block you. They ghost you. <laughs> I'm going, I'm doing this for your benefit. I am trying to educate you. On later on in life, if somebody sees that, that post is probably going to sit there forever unless you delete it. And even then, God knows where it went to if somebody copied it. Um, be careful. So education is really important. But yeah, they just ghost you. It's like, buzz off, mom. You're gone. <laughs> One of the things that I noticed, and I don't know if you guys noticed that, and if you see anything else, please let me know. I love cartoons and cartoon movies. So I watch cartoon movies. One of the themes that I've watched in all of these movies, and I hope it changes a bit, it's that the main figure is a rebellious child who their parents will tell them not to do something. And they will say, buzz off, I'm gonna do it. And they will go into the world and um, they're villains, they're good people, good other animals that would come in, they will go through the whole ordeal and they will uh, you know, survive it all. And they'll come back to their parents and say, see, you just wanted to limit me. And see, when I didn't listen to you and went in the world, it all worked out. This is the theme on every single one please go check it out. And then we wonder why when we say something to our children, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they'll do it themselves. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Definitely not Disney. <laughs> like... Go, Nemo. Yeah, yeah, all of them, all of them. All of them. Go check them back with this idea. Every mm -hmm. single one of them is the same thing. The, the, the lot of stuff we think is safe for kids, you know, Nickelodeon, all, it's not. It, they're being groomed. They're being, you know, it, it's, it's bad. It's bad. 
Yeah, even Nickelodeon. Sometimes I watch the um, the shows that are for teenagers or even junior high. Uh, let's say 10, 10, well, I mean, even if it is for 12 and up, I think they uh, seven and eight year olds are watching it anyway. Um, again, a lot of um, uh, kind of dismissing parental advice and uh, taking away. They, I get it that they really want to go away from an authoritarian parent, uh, but I, sometimes I think they fall off the other side, which is like just dismissing parents versus, you know, let's look. But this the whole concept of you don't know anything, you're too old, it's already passe, we're moving so fast. But the, they don't get that the you know human wisdom doesn't change. Yes, technology changes, but human wisdom has not really changed all these years because our brain has not changed. As a human being, our brain has not developed as exactly the same brain. But because technology changes, obviously what we have to deal with differs, but the concepts of the wisdom of how to run life it still will go back to 5,000, 8,000 years ago and bring those wisdom back. So, but unfortunately what we're seeing in entertainment, um, it doesn't take the value of a parental wisdom in there. Yeah. Interesting. So how can our listeners reach out to you? Uh, Fujan.com, F-O-O-J-A-N.com. And, um, you know, reach out. I, I also see clients uh, over the you know internet. Um, just to know for people, Life Reset, they can get it from Amazon. And this goes through the whole model and it takes you through every aspect of your life because I think that it's important for you to look at every area of your life because we have skills in some areas, but then we don't transfer them to others. Um, you know, we might have a good communication skills we've created in our um, work arena, but don't transfer it to our family systems or like relatedness in, in our mates. Um, and then you got to realize when you get like you're two or three years old and, um, you know, you make up this, your mind that I'm not good enough because my mommy didn't give me what I want or something happened where you really personalized it and generalized it about you. And then imagine going to school and then your friend says something and says, see, I told you I'm not good enough. Then you go, you know, in a, uh, you get a crush on somebody and they're not into you and you're like, see, I'm not good enough. You go to the first job and you're not that great. You get fired. See, I'm not good enough. And you keep seeing this, that, that, that kind of a, one self-belief, one core self-belief, it kind of like, it, it uh, manifests itself in all fabric of life in all areas. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I take this technique and model and we check in every single area of life, our relationship with people, acquaintances, uh, work and money, uh, intimate relationship and sexuality, siblings, parents, uh, your body, yourself, you know, like what you talked about, um, about eating disorder or any of the diseases you might have, any of the addictions, um, nature, universe, God, death, like anything that you actually deal with. Um, so we take this in all areas. So you kind of clean up and you become a holistic in all of the areas of your life. And then if there are any uh, in your audience, any therapists or coaches, I am certifying uh, people in this model. And then this book came out, uh, The Awareness Integration Therapy which is for coaches, clearing the past, um, create a new future and live a fulfilled life, which this book is for them, is for educators, teachers, therapists, counselors, coaches. And I also do a certification program for them that I will teach them so they can do that with their clients or at their schools. I'm all about research. Anybody out there who wants to take this in and research it with the population that they have, I'm in contact me and I will be there supporting you to, to get this out uh, to everyone. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for Very being our guest. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. It was a joyous conversation with you. It was great meeting the two of you. Uh, you Likewise. Well. We'll thank you for listening to this episode. Be sure to visit us at lifterstory.com.